Concept City, Open University, Telecommunication Studies, Number 1, Private Automatic Exchanges and Private Automatic Branch Exchanges, etc. and a short intro. Good evening. I'm here to tell you today about Private Automatic Branch Exchanges. Well, Private Automatic Exchanges mainly, but we've got one in the kitchen as well. So, we'll bear the introduction music and have a look at The Beast, a private automatic telephone exchange. You're actually looking at a private automatic exchange, or a PAX as it's known. As you can see, it's standing in the corner all alone, and usually there's a great big cover covering the front over. So, inside it's very, very private indeed, and that's why it's called a private exchange. Now, there's lots of complicated things in there. Look at that. Isn't that complicated? I bet you've never seen anything so complicated in all your life. And also, under those covers there, these covers here, okay, there's lots of complicated relay covers that come in and out and oh, it's fantastic. Um, there's some more up here as well. In fact, it's full of them. Brilliant. So let's have a look at the operation of the private automatic telephone exchange a little more closely. See these things you're looking at now, here? Well, they're part of it. They're called um, line finders. When I pick up a telephone, did you see that one stepping then? That one there, it whizzed round, and then it found the line. And here's the telephone itself, purring away with dial tone. So, if I were to uh, move the camera up a bit, <laughs> oh, oh, I can't move it up really very much. However, there we are. See that one with the light on it just there? Well, when I dial a number on the telephone, on this telephone here, watch it step. The very same telephone. And I'll dial an O. Ready? And the light went out, didn't it, boys and girls? Well, O's not a really a real number in the numbering range, however, it did demonstrate the unit selector stepping. Want to watch it again? Watch the line finder just there, and then the light will come on when it's found the line. Brilliant! And now dial a number. Let's dial 2-1. Two, 2, then a 1. And actually, in here, if you've got powerful enough ears, you'll be able to hear ringtone. It's pretty crap actually on these patches, so I won't bother. There is a cassette available with all the ringtones on, priced £3.50. Make it five from this address. Let's put the phone down again, shall we? And uh, I'll just show you around the packs a little bit. We'll uh, zoom in on the relays. They're fantastic, aren't they? There's lots of them, as you can see. All uni selectors, of course. <laughs> And that's about it, really. This one came from Coventry Polytechnic. It's big, isn't it? Bob me. Right, well, let's go and look at another one now, shall we? Um, it's in another room, so we'll go and find it. Here she is. This little beauty is a 25-line version of the same one we've just been looking at. This is a GEC 25-line PAX. It's housed in a wooden case with a glass front so you can see all the insides of it. I think it's a really beautiful telephone exchange. I want to marry it. Our travels must take us outside, where there's a small room full of them. Well, two of them anyway. The telephone exchange room. Let's go in and see. What you're looking now are the actual line finders of an AT and E, or an AT and E, um, 50 line, Two motion selector exchange. What is it used to select, you're saying? Well, oh by the way, they're the line relays. There's lots of them. Two per subscriber, that's a hundred there. Other relays, I'm afraid it's a little out of focus. I can't get far enough away. Tone uh, transformer, a lot of uni selector. Yes, they're the line uni selectors, I said. Telephone 280, we can plug that into the front of a selector in a few seconds and show you it switching. However, here's the two motion selectors. The relays are underneath these cans. I'll take them off to show you, or I'll take one of them off to show you anyway. We'll have that one. All the relays, 
and there's the actual selector mechanism there. Beautiful, isn't it? What I'll do is I'll plug the telephone number to and then I'll seize the selector. Watch this relay just here. Well, we're having difficulty focusing, I'm afraid. It's come out again. Oh, it's the top relay. It'll operate. There it goes. I'll release the selector and you'll see it take one step and release with the bank. Brilliant, isn't it? So to make a telephone call work, we see the dial tone and dial digit. The selector select steps vertically and then rotary. Brilliant, eh? Unfortunately, it's gone to a busy outlet. Let's release it. And there we are. Well, that's basically how it works. We won't go too technical in detail today, of course, because we are all new to this. So, what's at the bottom there? A quick look. Well, there should be a transformer there. Power eliminator. You know, battery eliminator thing. However, there's not, so I've stored lots of things in there. Cleaning equipment, spare uh, selectors and so on. And there's also some diagrams. Uh, the exchange itself is connected to the outside world via this distribution case over here. I know it looks a bit of a mess. However, it works. The door itself is very well oiled. Keep shutting. Never mind. There's a telephone on the wall which we can use to make calls through the exchanges. But I can't dial and hold the camera at the same time, unfortunately.